Today I'm making a video with my Soviet M44 carbine. I've had this rifle about 10 years. It's always been an accurate, reliable rifle. It was cheap to purchase and the ammunition for it is cheap. So the reason why I'm making this video today is just to feature a repair that I think will become more common on these rifles as time goes on, just given their age. I'm, this rifle is 73 years old and many of the other rifles of this type, like an M9130 and such, they're actually much older. They've probably been Arsenal refurbished at some point, more than likely. But still, these parts are going to break because just, just of age. And this is the bolt stop, uh, the bolt stop. And I'll show you what happened as to how I found out that it was broken. I took it out of the gun safe about two months ago, actually to make a video, or not to make a video, but just to do some testing on steel targets I make. And I opened up the bolt to make sure it was empty, which it was. I turned to get something else out of the gun safe, and as I did, the bolt slid out of the back of the receiver and fell to the ground. Luckily, it didn't hurt anything. But that's, well, I noticed that the trigger had no tension to it. So that's when I look down in the inside of the receiver and could see the bolt stop has no tension, no tension on the trigger whatsoever. And that, that's one piece in there. So I decided to pull it apart and see exactly what part had broken. Uh, because, and, and I'll be honest, maybe I, it's such a cheap rifle, it's only $120. I wouldn't worry too much about taking it apart because although it is a collectible piece of history and it's a, it's a nice rifle, if I did screw something up and had to replace it with another part, I wouldn't feel too upset about it. So I thought, oh, I can, I can handle this. So... I'll get into taking it apart here and we'll see how it comes apart, goes together, see what the part is that broke and show you how to replace it. The first thing that you would do with this assembly is take the bolt out, but since, you know, the bolt doesn't want to stay in here anyway, well, it was already out and on the table, so we don't need to worry about that part. So proceeding from the bolt, you want to take out the cleaning rod which is pretty simple. It's just screws out, which is hopefully something you can do. I mean, most people can do that. Screw out. That reminds me, N Never mind. Um, and then you want to carefully take the bayonet out and affix it to the muzzle. You're going to need to do that in order to access the barrel bands. And also at this point, I, you could have done it before you extended the bayonet as well. But you want to take your sling out. You don't have to take the rear sling out, which is good. I don't really like undoing this 73-year-old leather too much because it, it doesn't seem to want to be moved around a lot without cracking. In order to take the barrel bands down, zoom in a little bit, a little bit. You have these spring clips. You just have to depress and push and push. You can see the arsenal mark on that one. This one is a little more finicky. Set that down real quick. I have to many times, well, many times, like I take this thing apart all the time. Uh, depress this and then I'll use the little disassembly tool, the little, little tool that came with it. It's got multiple uses. And I'll use that to just slightly nudge it over the spring clip so it just makes it a little easier. There you go. Hopefully you can see that pretty well. And then you have the top heat shield part of the barrel. 
this thing is really thin and although these are cheap mass-produced rifles to me it's amazing to make such a thin such a thin piece of wood that holds up so well and again 73 years old and it's chipped and dinged up but there aren't any cracks in this thing it's in good shape I mean I hope I'm in that good of shape on 73 Look down the end of it. Ooh. I'll just set that down kind of out of the way. Don't want to set anything down on top of it. At this point, I like to flip the bayonet back. Let's pull that out against the barrel. Uh, that way, we don't have to worry about poking anything over there. That way, one, I, I have things sitting over there, and two, even if you didn't, you don't really want to just stab things with a bayonet randomly. I mean, maybe you do. Maybe you've got problems like that. I don't know. It's not for me to judge, but I would recommend you don't just stab things with a bayonet. That's, I mean, some things like cardboard boxes or watermelons or other inanimate objects that don't have feelings, I guess. I mean, I, I don't know. Anyway, after you do that, you have a screw in the top of the receiver, right here in the back. Tang. And then you have one here in the front of the magazine, which this whole assembly is the trigger guard magazine assembly. It just comes out in a unit, and then the barreled action will just come out in a unit. It's pretty straightforward. Move this over to here. Zoom you in your beats so you can actually see what's going on there. So you have the magazine follower right there. Your little interrupter. And then our, our inoperable bolt stop. And our back screw. Now, and although I had done this a couple different times with our fancy little disassembly tool here, it honestly is kind of a pain in the butt because it doesn't really want to stay in this screw so well, which I'll, I'll move my hand out of the way here when I actually do it. But I'm going to use, speaking of my off-camera stuff, ooh, a screwdriver. Zoom in so you can see the hardcore screwdriver action I mean and I have taken this apart already that's one of the reasons why these screws are so easy to come out not that they should really be that hard to come out either because there's no real reason to you know overbearingly put a screw into anything there's tight and then there's over tight so exciting my hand in the way there we go Pull both of those out and just slide that right out then you can just pull this right out of the top and with that which i mean if you look at the stock you know it does look as you'd expect a soviet stock would look it's rough it's definitely rough. I mean, I feel like I could get a splinter if I ran my finger down along here, and so I'm not going to do that. Or maybe I should do that on camera because that is about the way those things go. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can see it's not not the greatest. Well, you maybe you can't see. You can kind of see. It's not the greatest woodwork in the world, but it's functional. It works. There are no cracks in here. It's in good shape. Again, for 73 years old, not a uh, not a piece of junk or anything. I'm gonna set this off to the side. Ooh, the ominous off to the side of the camera. What's going on just off to the side of the camera? Anyway, now I'll flip the barreled action over. Zoom in on that a bit. And this is our infamous uh, bolt stop spring which as you can see it's not not interacting with the uh 
trigger. Well, I mean, it is. It's, it's not allowing it to swing further forward, but that I wouldn't call that interaction. And your, your trigger here is just held in with a pin. Hold on. Let me grab a punch. That was good. That worked out well. And not even the punch I needed. Okay, you can just push this out. And the trigger comes out like that. But put that back there for now. Now, I also have loosened this screw off camera, which it actually was a little torn up like that before I'd done that. So, I mean, I guess maybe you can't see that. Defending actions, you can't even tell that maybe weren't mine. Although I would say that newer silver portion there, that I probably did do. But let's put the screwdriver in. Take it out. And we'll grab our new part, which is this right here. That is what this should look like. Except this is uh, supposed to be better than the original. I actually had kind of a hard time finding this part surplus, but I found a brand new replacement that's supposed to be better. I can't remember where I found it for sure. I know I looked at Sarco and I can't remember if Sarco had them or not, which if you haven't been to Sarco's webpage, they're pretty cool. But I think that may have been where I got it. Anyway, it just pretty simply, if you look, the old one, the new one, they have a U on one side. That U fits right onto this rounded portion of the receiver right here. Right above where the screw goes, and you can tell it's round. Round, pretty simple. After I realized that maybe the camera was zoomed in a little too much because I hadn't looked at the viewer in like three minutes, which is kind of dumb if you want to make videos on YouTube. This is something I realized. Check your viewer if you're the only one that's making them because you don't know what's going on if you don't actually check that screen. But now you take the trigger out, pin, and take the new bolt stop assembly and put it in like so then replace your pin i mean this this is a pretty simple repair the part lines itself back up to the rounded portion of the receiver as long as you have it lined up with where it goes uh on the threads now is the time to zoom back in a bit i guess hold on i'm gonna Take this back apart real quick because I didn't really show you how this goes in here. The Again, I showed that this does go against the receiver, but this nub goes up inside the trigger. So, so you know, the nub goes up. Nub up. Nub up, son. Nub up. I don't know what that could mean, but it implications are da dastardly. Okay. <laughs> Slide the pin back in. There you go. That's all functional. And now, oh, dance that thing around. Put your screw back in to where it belongs. Again, pretty simple. Kind of self aligns. And take your take your fancy screwdriver. Close to a side view. That's a fancy side view. Oh yeah. <laughs> anyway, tighten that up again. I mean, it looks like I'm going really hard, but I'm not. I'm just trying to go tight. So that's back in. Trigger has tension on it. Tension trigger. Now put the bolt in. Now, if you notice, keep my fingers out of the way. I have to pull the trigger back, slide it in, cock it down. Let's see if this releases the firing pin. Kind of hard to do with one hand. Yeah, it did. Hey, still did it. And now, open it back up. 
drop the pin out of the trigger. That was a that was a smooth move on my part. But hey, it happens. Now I will place the pin back into the trigger like that. You know, and and in the stock that that's that's uh, inleted or yeah inleted to keep that from falling out. So you know it's not just going to happen. There, got that out, got that done. Let's bring the stock back from off camera. Stock really only goes in here one way. The only th two things you have to worry about while doing this is making sure you get the trigger aligned with that little slot and that you have not, in fact, dropped the pin back out of the trigger, which I nearly did. Well, this is uh, not hard. The only thing that's really kind of making this difficult, you want to kind of hold it like that. And if you can, pull the bayonet out, which... Again, I want to I want to stress the importance of caution with the bayonet. And it's not because this bayonet is particularly sharp or anything of that nature, but it's a pointed metal object and people and many other things are soft non-metal objects. So a bayonet easily pierces their skin or your skin or you know some bystanders so i i always tell people you know a gun is dangerous when you have bullets but a knife or in this case a bayonet is always dangerous because it's always pointy and always sharp and always metal um anyway now you just take put the receiver the old action back into the stock i like to Go ahead and put the barrel bands on now, although, you know, the back screw in the stock may be better, but I just find this kind of holds everything together. You just want to be gentle with it. In a way, you don't want to, you know, flex the stock, the barreled action around in the stock when the only thing that's holding it in place are the barrel bands. So, first slide the big one, then slide the skinny one, and that's pretty much it. And then back here is your rear receiver screw, which is a long one, like that. Goes right in there. Your trigger housing just slides right into there, which just, you know, point that I should make. I should have put this in before I put the screw in there, but hey, happens. Just sits right down in there like that. And just hold that together, making sure that your barreled action is all the way in the back of the stock. Because if you don't do that, then the screw won't line up and you'll sit here turning the screw and turning the screw and turning the screw. And either you're screwing the screw up, screwing the screw up, you're messing up the threads uh, by you know ramming them against a piece of metal that they're not made to be rammed up against. Or you're just wasting your life screwing the screw that goes to nowhere. Hmm. That, that's kind of kind of philosophic there almost. But again, not overly tight, just tight. I roll it over, put in the trigger housing, the one in the front of the trigger housing. Again, with my hand in the way. In the way. Well, I need to design a screwdriver that keeps my hand out of the way. There we go. Get just tight. Okay. Now that's back together. Fold the bayonet back in. And reinsert the cleaning rod into the cleaning rod channel. Cleaning the rod channel. That, that would make some boring goddamn television. Anyway, the clean the cleaning rod channel. Or I mean I guess it depends on depends on how you mean cleaning rod. 
Now that that's back together, go ahead and slide the bolt back in, pulling back on the trigger. Locks into place. If you want for safety, you can either cock the striker to the side, which seems ridiculous. Which, I mean, and it's not easy to undo, really. At least not from this angle. But you can also pull back on the cocking piece and release that. Don't do that. Don't do that on a cartridge. Don't ever chamber a cartridge and do that. Because that's a good way to drop that and fire it when you're not intending to. And although it would be hilarious and it would be funny to watch, it would also be dangerous as, as it can be. So don't do it. Don't do it. Anyway, now we reattach the front sling, making sure that it's parallel with the stock, like the other one. It's pretty simple. You have a slot, you put the belt in, put it through, be gentle with it. It's old, old leather. It's like George Hamilton. I'm pretty sure he's still alive. Pretty sure. There we go. It's back together. It's functional. No more bolt falling out of the back of the rifle. Yeah, and it works. And it's back together. Two things that are always good. I will be making some videos where I'm shooting this and the K98K that I have, but I'm waiting on getting some more ammunition for that. Anyway, I hope this video was informative and at least wasn't like totally worthless for you to watch. Appreciate your time. Have a good day.